it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Nastasi. I'm leading the AGNETS project, and our goal is to understand uh, which physics uh, underlie the aging process and uh, how can we change the character of aging using that knowledge. Um, I cannot change it. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, uh, as you can see, our organism is a complex network system. And um, the big question is uh, how aging phenotype emerges from the uh, gene regulatory network. Uh, because uh, all uh, these um, uh, layers, um, on the picture you can see four, but there are many more. Uh, all the physiological units, including genes, proteins, and uh, uh, bigger units, they work together, they uh, exchange the information, and uh, the life emerges from that cooperative behavior. And that's uh, what we study. Um, a lot of uh, projects uh, aim to study uh, genes of aging separately. But uh, of course, um, th there is a very good example with Lego bricks that uh, if you even have uh, a very detailed description for each brick, you will never uh, comprehend the system, how it works, uh, the dynamics of the system without knowing the instruction, the building instruction. And the same is with the aging genes. Uh, we really need to know the connections between these genes to, uh, uh, to get information about the aging and the, and the dynamics of the aging process. Also, um, the, there is an, a very huge unsolved question. Uh, it is uh, how can we measure the degree of aging? Now, uh, there are a lot of approaches, um, but uh, the very fundamental, um, uh, the, the very uh, the generally accepted um, algorithms, mm -hmm. they do not explain the fundamentals of the aging process. And uh, we still don't know uh, how many variables do we need to predict uh, the mortality and uh, to predict, uh, to uh, get information about the spent resource of a living organism. And here you can see that uh, individuals with the same age may have different uh, degrees of aging, but at the same time, they may have different rates of aging and different accelerations of aging and so on. Um, there are uh, a lot of approaches, um, a lot of, uh, for example, aging clocks that uh, work very well and that, that predict uh, very well the chronological aging based on, uh, uh, mainly based on uh, DNA mutilation data. But um, why? Uh, are they so uh, great in predictions? Uh, we also, uh, we still don't know. And um, our study uh, consists of two parts. Uh, the first one, uh, we compare uh, the human young state with older states. And here we uh, find, uh, we are looking for uh, structural changes of gene networks uh, that drive the aging process um, we do uh, spectral clustering for different aging, uh, uh, for, for different ages, um, and uh, we analyze these clusters. And the second uh, uh, area of our research is the explanation uh, of a lifespan of different organism, organisms, especially very close species with dramatical change in lifespans. And we believe that we, uh, uh, the lifespan hugely depends on the peculiarities of gene regulatory networks. And uh, we are looking for these peculiarities. And uh, th there is a very cool uh, example uh, of using network theory in biology. And uh, this was done uh, by a professor who is also advising us. Uh, he's a very well-known uh, theoretical physicist, Alexander Gorsky. 
uh, a, this study was done on uh, uh, human connectomes. And here, uh, the difference between um, animals and human brain was clearly explained by physics and math. And it, uh, uh, they, they, this team revealed that uh, to, um, they, they did the following. They um, had uh, a network, a random network, and they uh, put cons different conservation laws to, um, to model the evolution of this random network to a connectome uh, that they had. And they revealed that uh, for successful prediction of macaque and nematode networks, uh, you need only vertex degree conservation and conservation of overall number of triangles. Whereas to successfully predict human connectomes, uh, you need additional uh, set of uh, conservation laws and it was local clustering constraint. And our study is very close to this study. Uh, so uh, let me explain a little bit the object that we are working with. We are working with adjacency matrices of uh, different gene networks that correspond to different ages. And uh, just for an example, if uh, we have a gene network, uh, we have uh, connections between genes and the, such connections has a measure of force that one gene influence another one. And uh, these connections uh, can uh, we be presented as a table with coordinates that correspond to different genes and numbers that correspond to the force of uh, influence of one gene to another one. This is our workflow. Uh, what we do, we collect uh, expression data. Uh, we collect it from uh, public databases such as Gene Expression Omnibus. And this is a very tough uh, manual work because uh, you need to uh, very accurately um, harmonize all your data sets that you collected. And you need to verify that this data is, uh, is, is built uh, with healthy people. Uh, and these people were indeed healthy. So we collect um, only uh, data sets from clinical studies of healthy people that were um, approved for aging studies like that. Then uh, when we built a huge data set with a full range of uh, ages, we divide this data set into age baskets. And out of each age basket, we create an adjacency matrix uh, with a special algorithm that predicts this gene network. And uh, when we get such gene networks, we uh, analyze them with physics, with network theory approaches, such as spectral tools. And then uh, we interpret our results with uh, different biological, uh, well-known biological databases. Here is expression data that we got. We have the hugest, uh, uh, the, the, the hugest uh, data set consists of 600 uh, uh, participants and it was whole blood. And further, I will show pictures that correspond to the analysis uh, of exactly this, uh, whole, uh, this blood data set. Uh, how we infer uh, these uh, regulatory relations between genes. What we do, we use a Gini tree algorithm and we are still improving it because the, the, uh, this is a quite a separate topic that uh, can be uh, done endlessly. So we can improve and improve and uh, just uh, uh, do it all the time. Uh, but uh, the general uh, mechanism of uh, how we predict these interconnections between genes, we uh, take our, uh, expression data set that correspond to a particular age basket uh, and uh, the algorithm uh, predicts uh, gene exp by one by one algorithm predicts uh, gene expressions then uh, uh, it, uh, it during this prediction it builds ensembles of uh, decision trees and uh, as we know, uh, ensembles of uh, decision trees are very 
uh, suitable for that because this is a model that can that is fully interpretable. So we can uh, take uh, our uh, take all the importances out, out of this model, and uh, when we take the importances, uh, we get the uh, the relations between uh, between our genes. That's how we build our adjacency matrix. And uh, as, I, as I already said, adjacency matrix is a representation of our gene network. Uh, of course, we need to check uh, whether the network that we created out of expression data is real and really uh, reflects the biology. Uh, for that, we use uh, different uh, approaches, and one of them uh, we do embeddings of uh, networks uh, that we got and of genes inside each network, and we see uh, and we compare. For example, uh, for embeddings of networks, we compare whether our predicted networks are very close to the known networks uh, of uh, gene interactions from the known databases. And, and here are uh, some examples of embeddings for genes for each network. So each color corresponds to a particular network of a particular age. And we see that uh, there is a kind of uh, rotation around common center. And this center is uh, indeed uh, common, so it has uh, gene, common genes inside that uh, are basically housekeeping genes without uh, which uh, a cell uh, just cannot live. And then uh, after the uh, verification and validation of our networks, uh, we uh, apply network theory, uh, especially uh, spectral tools. And here you can see uh, different spectra for different ages. Uh, so uh, just to remind, for each age, we build a network of genes. And uh, uh, from each network of genes, we obtained this spectra. And as you can see, this was, was quite an unpredictable result that this spectra really changed. So the gene regulatory network structure does uh, change uh, with time. Yeah. And um, let's have a closer look to it. Uh, uh, what is interesting in this spectrum? Uh, for example, this is a spectrum uh, for a gene network that corresponds to a median age of 24 years old of a human. And uh, we can clearly see that um, our our eigenvalues are uh, complex, and uh, so they have an imaginary part. And uh, we can clearly see that the part of the spectrum uh, of the spectrum uh, points are very uh, dense in, in in this part. And here, um, th th there is quite a large distance between uh, the points. Uh, so uh, this is a dis uh, this is called in physics a discrete spectrum. And um, th there is a mathematical statement that uh, the discrete part of the spectrum shows the existence of the clusters, and the number of clusters correspond to the number of points in this discrete spectrum. But uh, here, uh, the huge challenge was to uh, develop an algorithm to really identify this discrete spectrum, because um, not having an imaginary part uh, is not sufficient uh, for a point to be a part of discrete spectrum. So this is quite a challenging uh, problem that we already solved. And uh, we got, uh, we identified these discrete uh, spectrums uh, for all, uh, for all these ages, and we got uh, clusters for every age. And uh, this is how it looks like. These are our clusters. Uh, each column corresponds to a uh, different age. Uh, here is a, a median age in, in each age basket. And uh, these uh, circles are clusters. The bigger the circle is, the bigger the cluster is. And the very interesting discovery was that each network contained non-clustered part 
and uh, contains separate clusters. And that means that uh, gene regulatory network uh, is flexible enough to react to external per perturbations, but at the same time, it is robust and it uh, returns to the initial state, initial working state uh, quite fast. Um, then uh, what we identified is the decline in number of clusters uh, with age, and we identified a huge uh, level of gene uh, rearrangement uh, within these clusters. Here, uh, the arrows uh, denote the re gene re rearrangements between clusters, and the thicker the arrow, the bigger is the Jacquard index uh, between the clusters. So it is clearly seen that, for example, a non-clustered part is almost conserved uh, among all ages. Uh, let's dive uh, deeper into uh, clusters characteristics. Uh, you can see that, the, as I already said, the number of clusters uh, decreases with age, and also the mutual information between uh, different uh, networks also decreases. Uh, that means that uh, during aging process, a uh, gene regulatory uh, network kind of loses uh, its specialization uh, and uh, gene uh, functions that are enriched in different clusters uh, do change over time. Uh, what we did next, uh, when we obtained these clusters, we had to interpret it from the point of biology and find out um, which gene func, how gene functions uh, transform and uh, dis uh, distribute among our clusters during aging. For that, we did the following. Uh, we got uh, from known databases, for example, open targets database and uh, go terms and uh, and so on, uh, we got groups of genes that are associated with disease or with um, different biological functions. And uh, for each uh, gene group, uh, we investigated uh, the intersections of this, uh, this group with uh, clusters for each age. And then we calculated the Gini coefficient uh, of this distribution. And this uh, Gini coefficient, coefficient means the following, that uh, zero value means that the gene function is, uh, has a huge dispersion among all the clusters, uh, whereas uh, a value close to one means that uh, this gene function is localized in one of the clusters, in one or two clusters. And what we discovered is that for almost all the diseases uh, from uh, open targets uh, database, we see the decline in Gini coefficient. It means that when a person was young, and for example, um, here on all plots, the beginning is 25 years old. When a person was very young, um, the genes that were targets of a particular disease, they were localized in one of the gene clusters. And when uh, we uh, take into account a uh, old person, we see that the same uh, group of targets that correspond to the disease is spread across all clusters. And probably that means that really uh, shows why in older people, it is far more difficult or even impossible to treat some of these the diseases. And uh, if you have a look at uh, the uh, cluster with uh, 98 genes, uh, the Gini coefficient here is between 0 and 0 0.2. And uh, when we analyze the diseases that uh, are in this uh, group, uh, we discovered that this is almost non-curable chronic diseases. So probably the high distribution of a set of targets that correspond to a particular disease um, 
is a sign of uh, curability of this disease. Then we did the, fall, uh, the same with uh, biological uh, groups. And uh, here you can see uh, the clusterization of a behavior of uh, Gini coefficient for different, uh, uh, for different uh, biological processes. And, uh, but uh, here there are only significant, sig significantly changing biological processes so that Gini coefficient sig significantly changed uh, with uh, age. And we also see that a lot of biological processes uh, either uh, non uh, do not change its Gini coefficient uh, with age or uh, decrease it. Uh, so uh, probably it is, it is a s evidence of uh, like increase in frailty of an organism because when the biological process uh, begin to spread across all clusters, it, it weakens. And now we are planning to develop a tool that we will measure uh, the effect of external perturbation on a group of people, because we already learned how to do spectral clustering for each group, uh, for a group of people and uh, interpret it. And uh, of course, we will study more um, the diseases that uh, have uh, a very low Gini coefficient in our clusters and uh, that dramatically change uh, with age and the same with biological processes. Yeah, uh, and also uh, what is also very interesting and uh, why um, do we do that? Because um, nowadays uh, nobody really understands age uh, and that, that's a huge problem. There are a lot of uh, dozens of projects, but th there is no general, generally accepted theory of, of aging. And uh, recently there were several papers that used um, physics approaches and tried to uh, cal uh, calculate entropy and entropy change. And we also uh, calculated uh, spectral entropy uh, for our um, gene networks. Uh, that corresponded to different ages. And we see the increase in spectral entropy with some jumps. And uh, we really like uh, the, uh, the, the theory that probably our organism uh, through aging process, uh, it goes through different metastable states while uh, it becomes um, until it becomes so frail that uh, it is un unstable, it, 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 it uh, becomes unstable, and then uh, it acquires a lot of chron uh, chronic diseases and die. So uh, we really want to develop uh, thermodyna uh, thermodynamical theory of aging. Yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, um, imagine, if, for example, take a particular age. Uh, for a particular age, you have um, also of a gene of genes. And uh, we take a time, for example, um, for biological, for example, uh, for a uh, we get a set of and we see how uh, this is spread hmm? uh, from open uh, this one was taken from open database. Uh, and then we see how these uh, genes that correspond to a particular disease we study is uh, intersecting with each uh, of our clusters. And um, <clears throat> uh, based on this intersection, we can calculate a metric that will uh, show us uh, how mm, a dispersion of uh, genes of interest uh, through our groups. And this is called Gini coefficient. So 
So if it goes down, it means that um, the set of genes that we are looking for uh, is more spread across that contains a small part of our Well, if it is not, it means that the whole set responding to the disease is laying in one of the parts, in one or two. Yeah, we get this class from the network. Yes, uh, and in that network, we considered only age weights, not node weights. Yeah, so it's mm, no. Just uh, imagine when we when you get uh, these uh, clusters, you already have some Some genes and cluster three contains some genes. So you stop thinking about the nodes, you just have clusters three yeah. doing that. Uh, yeah, uh, I will show you. Um, uh, yes, uh, we are currently developing that. So um, we learned how to get clusters out of healthy people, uh, out of networks built on health. Uh, yeah, and now uh, we are uh, we will compare uh, healthy spectra with, uh, for example, spectra of say. Of people of same age but with chronic diseases and uh, uh, we have well uh, our goal is not to tell the age of a person uh, uh, yeah, biological biomarker. Uh, yes, of course, we are looking for for a good uh, measurement of age, and I think uh, the the fact that we acquired uh, this behavior from for diseases and uh, this behavior for uh, different uh, like biological functions means that uh, that our is uh, some kind of uh, uh, is accepted. So, uh, because we see that disease becomes probably that for some of these things. And uh, we see that biological functions, they weaken and they and uh, they weaken, and we saw it uh, in our population. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for person, for more personalized uh, analysis, uh, we need. Uh, there are two ways to do that. At first way is to build personalized gene networks, but this is very tough because data uh, it requires far more data, and on data on so, so this is tough. But on, on the development of the algorithm to do that. But the second way is to get the basic knowledge out of these cohort studies and uh, for example get a uh, dynamic variables the, the learn how to calculate it and then when we get these uh, variables 
uh, we then can use just transcriptomic uh, it, it, transcriptomes, expression data, and then we can uh, um, analyze each person's trajectory already uh, having knowledge about the dynamics that it should undergo. So this is the second, uh, this is our second for the personalized. Mm -hmm. No, it's currently under, uh, like, uh, we are working on the, on the, Yes, on the submission. Hmm? Uh, no. Uh, you mean array? Uh, no. Uh, it's not my. You mean micro arrays? No. Uh, no, it's uh, RNA seq. But we have microarrays, but for another uh, for other tissues, but for the blood we have RNA here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, we checked for five thousand. Uh, here, uh, maybe I did not did not explain it clearly. Uh, each uh, trajectory corresponds to one disease, uh, to gene coefficients of one disease, and we checked. For about uh, five uh, five thousand and eight hundred diseases from open targets, and these diseases are, are seen here, and they are clusterized based on gene coefficient change with age. Hmm? Uh, could you please repeat it? And thank you. That's that's a very good uh, question. Uh, uh, by now, uh, we uh, got clusters of genes. So the whole, like, several thousand of genes were clustered. Uh, so uh, by now we don't have like small sets of genes to compare the weights, but of course uh, that's a good idea to see how genes that had very high weights, for example, in transcriptomic aging clocks, are distributed uh, across our clusters and how they change their uh, gene coefficients with age. Yeah, we will do that. Thank you. Uh, uh, by, by now, not, but uh, with our collaborators, we are planning to use uh, uh, UK bio Biobank to get access to EMR and also to blood tests because uh, there is a very cool uh, like theory that is uh, seen on uh, Barabashi papers and Bar Barabashi is, uh, is a very very known uh, scientist in network science uh, uh, from Boston. Uh, and the, 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 there is a theory that probably uh, data from uh, corresponding to different uh, uh, micros uh, to, to do different levels of measurements to different layers of these uh, complex network systems that, that corresponding to a human organism uh, probably different kinds of data could show same results, same dynamics. Uh, that's why we can perform the same analysis, uh, but not with transcriptomes, but with blood tests and compare it with EMR. Because unfortunately, by right now, uh, omics databases that are very close to UK Biobank with EMR, with different uh, such things, uh, but, but also th there are uh, several databases that are very young, but very promising. For example, the 10K uh, Fino project from um, uh, Weizmann Institute, uh, and they, they have a lot of uh, 
they are building this that database that is close to UK by a bank, but uh, with uh, Onyx data sets, and uh, it will be uh, public. And uh, of course, uh, we are very looking for for an access to it yes, because it's it's very cool. Yeah, and we could compare it with EMR the transcriptomic uh, results uh, with EMR data. Yes. Uh, information? Uh, uh, you mean in, in, uh, um, in information? Of the rate of aging? Ah, no, uh, I just showed the clusterization of uh, disease uh, uh, among clusters with age. Yeah, the, this picture. Uh, no, uh, we... Um, we didn't like uh, develop an algorithm that, uh, but we got uh, the integral results uh, for each network that shows um, that 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 shows, for example, such behaviors on the plots. You can see, and out of this, we are planning, of course, to develop some kind of aging biomarker because this was done only from computation on expression data. And uh, of course, it reflects uh, some trends that really change uh, with age. Yes, and currently, because it was uh, from the initial uh, idea, uh, it was to look, uh, our initial idea was uh, to look um, to networks, to gene networks, and see whether they at least uh, change their structure with age. And it was very unpredictable that they do. They really change their structure and it is very seen. It is clearly seen on the data. Yeah, that is probably the main, uh, the main discovery of uh, our project by now. Thank you, thank you so much.